Okay, so in this video, I'll talk about uh, an introduction to different types of convolution uh, operations in deep learning. Uh, you know, there are three things that we'll talk about, dilated convolution, transposed convolution, and spatial separable convolution. But before that, let us talk about what is a typical convolution, what is a typical 2D convolution, right? Typical 2D, 2D convolution looks as follows. This animation sort of depicts things. So, uh, you know, the original image is a 5 cross 5 image and we are applying uh, a 3 cross 3 filter uh, on this image so as to obtain what you see at the top, the output, a 5 cross 5 output. Notice that the 5 cross 5 original image is actually padded with a border of size 1. Right. So, so therefore in a typical 2D convolution there is this thing called padding and also notice that the filter is sort of moving one step at a time both from left to right and from top to bottom. So therefore the stride is 1 and uh, you know the kernel size or the size of the filter is 3 cross 3. Okay. So um, the number of input and output channels in this animation is set to 1 right? because uh, where input has channel 1 but output you know since we are using only one filter we get one uh, output channel. Okay. So, so what this shows is a 2D convolution, typical 2D convolution with a kernel size of 3 and a stride of 1 and pad of 1 with just one input channel. So that's a typical, typical 2D convolution. Right. Now, you know, what is the difference between a typical 2D convolution and a dilated convolution? Right. So dilated convolutions are also called as atros convolutions. And in this one, uh, they introduce another parameter, you know, yet another parameter to the convolution layers called as the dilation rate. Okay. So what this animation actually shows you is a 2D convolution with the same 3 cross 3 kernel but with a dilation rate of 2. Okay. So notice what is going on. So in this particular case, you know, uh, the input uh, is essentially a little larger input. So we have a 7 cross 7 input, right? And we have a 3 cross 3 filter still. Okay. But uh, uh, what you see here is that, uh, uh, you know, uh, there is this, this gap or a spacing in general, right? So it defines a spacing between the values in a kernel, the dilation rate. Okay. So a 3 cross 3 kernel, the dilation rate of 2 cross 2, in fact, has the same field of view as like a 5 cross 5 kernel. So if you notice, you know, the patch that it is looking at in the original image is a 5 cross 5 patch. But, you know, it's like uh, saying that, hey, you imagine taking a 5 cross 5 kernel and then deleting every second row and column. Okay. So that's the way uh, this uh, dilated convolutions work. So dilated convolutions are really useful when you want your filters so as to generate output by looking at a larger field of view in the original image. Okay. So they are, uh, they are pretty popular in the field of image segmentation in general. Okay. That's about dilated convolutions. Now there are yet another kinds of kind of convolutions uh, called as transposed convolutions. Right? Some people also call them as deconvolutions or fractionally strided convolutions. However, you know, deconvolution is not the right word for it. In fact, deconvolution would actually mean an inverse of convolution operation. So, you know, according to the size of the of the output generated by a deconvolution or a transpose convolution, they are pretty much the same. But uh, the inverse operation is pretty different from the from the transposed convolution operation. Okay. So, therefore, uh, calling it deconvolution is not the right thing. Okay. So a transpose convolution layer carries out a regular convolution but rewards its spatial transformation. Okay. So what you see here is a regular convolution. The input is 5 cross 5, 3 cross 3 filter with a stride of, uh, you know, with a stride of 2 basically and no padding creates a 2 cross 2 output. Okay. This is a typical convolution. Okay. Now what is a transpose of this convolution? You know, the idea is that you take the 2 cross 2 input but generate a 5 cross 5 output. So it's basically the opposite stuff. Okay. So essentially saying, uh, you know, uh, transpose to the convolution with no padding, uh, stride of 2 and a kernel of 3. So the idea is that you take the 2 cross 2 thing, but you align the 2 cross 2 original input, but you align it in such a way such that it will actually give you a 5 cross 5 output when you run a 3 cross 3 filter on top of it uh, with a stride of 1. Okay. So a transpose convolution has the following properties. It guarantees that the output will be a 5 cross 5 image, you know, uh, as well, while still performing a normal convolution operation. Okay. To achieve this, we need to perform some fancy padding and the fancy padding is what you see here. Okay. So it reconstructs the spatial resolution from before and performs a convolution. Now, this may not be the mathematical inverse, but for encoder-decoder architectures, actually it is very important. 
Okay. So uh, that's about the transpose convolution. So if you look at the fancy padding, this kind of padding is really required so that you can actually generate the output, which is the same size, uh, you know, if you were to, uh, same size the input, if you were to actually do um, a typical convolution operation. Okay, so that's about transposed convolutions. Now the last thing in this video is this special separable convolutions. Okay, so what you see in the picture are popularly called as the Sobel filters, Sobel X and Y filters. Uh, they are filters so as to which are used in typical image processing for edge detection, detecting edges in 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 original images. Okay. Now, uh, how are they related to separable or a specially separable convolution? Okay. So in a separable convolution, we can split the kernel operation into multiple steps and that's why it's called separable. So you know, you can basically uh, take the original convolution operation and spread, split it into steps, specifically here in this case, two steps. Okay. So let's express a convolution as a function y, uh, you know, of x and k, where y is the output image, of course, convolution, so it must generate an output volume or an output image, and x is the input image, and k is actually the kernel, okay. So, uh, you know, so typically convolution means take the input image, run this uh, k kernel over patches of the input image, and generate the output volume y, okay. Next, uh, you know, let's assume that k can actually be calculated as k1 dot k2. Okay. So the idea is that the kernel actually can be in, in fact split into two vectors k1 and k2. Okay. So uh, and this is k1 and k2 are vectors while k is a matrix. Okay. So uh, you know of course when you do matrix uh, vector multiplication k1 dot k2 you actually get a matrix. right? So, uh, so the idea is this would make it a separable convolution because instead of now doing a 2D convolution with k we could actually get the same result by doing two 1D convolutions one after the other. Okay, that's the idea. So popular X and Y Sobel filters using this uh, using this image processing can actually be obtained by by taking these two vectors one zero minus one and one two one transpose. So you know if you take the vector one zero minus one and then take the vector one two one, take the transpose of it, multiply the two, you know you get you get one of these you know, one of these Sobel filters. And similarly, you can get the other Sobel filter using two other vectors as well. So now, you know, why do people do these special separable convolutions? I mean, of course, you could just multiply with this kernel, so well filter kernel matrix, but why would you otherwise anyway do it as a two-step process of multiplying by the vector 101 and then multiplying by the vector 121? Okay. You do this because, uh, you know, uh, it would require six instead of nine parameters. So if you notice, you know, these vectors basically just contain six things, while if you look at, uh, you know, the, the matrix, it actually contains nine things. Less number of parameters is great. So that is why this makes sense. Okay. So here is another picture to explain the same concept. So let's say your original filter was this 3 cross 3 matrix, 3, 6, 9, 4, 8, 12, 5, 10, 15. Now the nice idea is that yes, you can express it in a, in a decomposable form as follows, 3, 4, 5 multiplied by 1, 2, 3. So if you uh, just apply typical rules of matrix multiplication, just verify that yes, the two are the same, right? So now, uh, you know, while the original convolution operation would mean taking the original image and getting the output image by doing a convolution using that filter, 3, 6, 9, 4, 8, 12, and so on, you know, special separable convolution would mean that rather than storing this nine values, these nine values, you just store six values, you know, 3, 4, 5, and 1, 2, 3. Okay. And uh, you know you can just uh, uh, you know sort of think and verify that hey uh, rather than doing the convolution with a three cross three kernel, even if you do the convolution in two steps, uh, doing three cross you know convolution with the three cross one kernel three four five, and then doing the convolution with uh, another one dimensional kernel one cross three you know one two three, you get the same output. Okay. So nice point is that instead of doing one convolution with nine multiplications, we do two convolutions with three multiplications each. So totally just six in total. Okay. Uh, to achieve the same effect. So the nice point is we require less number of less amount of space to store these kernels as well as the number of computations are smaller. Right? So with less multiplications, computational complexity goes down and the network is able uh, to run this thing much, much faster. Okay. Now there's a problem though with these uh, separable convolutions and the main issue is that uh, you know uh, you can actually do this only with certain kinds of kernels, right? certain kinds of such filters. Uh, those ones which can be actually decomposed or separated into two smaller kernels. Okay, so this becomes particularly bothersome during training since uh, of all the possible kernels the network could have adopted, uh, it will, it can only end up using, uh, you know, only a tiny portion of those uh, that can be separated into small kernels. Remember, kernels are weights which the network learns. 
right? So, so therefore, in general, the network could have learnt any three cross three matrix. But uh, if you are doing 1D kernels, you know, two steps of them, you're sort of forcing the network to learn only those particular kernels which are decomposable in nature, right? So, so that is one problem with the separable kernels. Um, but, uh, you know, nevertheless, they are still used in cases, in, in some cases, right? Um, so that is all about this video where we talked about three different kinds of kernels. Just to recap, dilated kernels, you know, transposed kernels and uh, specially separable convolution kernels. Uh, convolutions, right? So thank you for watching. You know, uh, feel free to uh, add examples from your experience when you have used such kernels or discuss related issues and provide links to relevant resources in the comments below.